Whopper.com. To watch live, thanks again to Borby Dort Whopper for helping out in the video department today. Borby. Borby. Bor- Borby's not happy about the Barbie movie. Uh, oh, the Barbie movie, yeah. yeah. It's all, Borby's a boy, but it's got called Barbie. Yeah. People are jerks. Well, kids can be very cruel. Mm-hmm. And that can carry into adulthood. I went to go see uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. I'm sorry, Mission colon Impossible subtitle Dead Reckoning, comma, Part 1. Hmm. Jeez. <laughs> How was it? It was Awesome. Of course it is. Those are awesome. really fun movies. Boy, whatever Zenu is, to, whatever really is doing for yeah. Tom Cruise, boy, he is making it work. It's just, the movie, it, it was a late screening. It was a 1040 screening. Oh, it was a, that late? I could have gone to that. Yeah, there was only one. I, didn't I would even have know fallen were, asleep. Though. I didn't even know they were doing them. They did one on Monday night and one last night. And it was at 1040 on IMAX. That's cool. And it was like me and three other people. So get out of there at like 10 to 2, right? Jeez. It's like 20 minutes of trailers. The movie is a few minutes shy of three hours. Wow. And it's the first half. This part two comes out. The very last Mission Impossible is split into two. So part two is the end of next June it comes out. And it is, it just never lets up. Mm -hmm. And you're watching it. Everybody makes a big deal about the fact that Tom Cruise... Uh, what made me think of it is they had the trailer for Oppenheimer on the IMAX, uh-huh. and you're like, God damn, is that going to be good? But that's coming out the same day as Barbie. Yeah. So there's a lot of people buying tickets for both, people who are going to do double Barbie, feature. Oppenheimer, double yeah. features, right? And, uh, you know, movie studios used to Bombs just- Bombs and blondes. Yeah. Movie studios used to complain when big movies would open on the same day. Now they just want everybody to go see everything. I, these could be from the same studio. I don't know. Probably not if they're opening the same day, but who cares? So Mission Impossible, you know, everybody talks about how Tom Cruise does all of his own stunts. Mm. But this movie, it's like everyone's doing their own stunts. And it's awesome. There's so many practical stunts in this movie. And it's got a great cast. I mean, it's got the people you know. It's got Ving Rhames. It's got Simon Pegg and Tom Cruise. Uh, Vanessa Kirby. You know, a bunch of them come back. A couple of new ones. The premise of the movie is, I think, fundamentally silly, but they don't lean too hard on it. The big bad is is like a sentient AI, mm. right? So the movie is them trying to stay one step ahead of, like, a guy, there's a bad guy, who is kind of doing the bidding of this AI, whatever. But the chase scenes in this movie, where the actors are clearly driving, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's awesome. That's very fun. Haley Atwell, who is in the Marvel Universe, she was um, Peggy Carter. She's like one of the main female. There's like three female leads in this movie. And a couple of new people show up. Um, But it's you're watching and it just never lets off the gas. So you're going from one massive action set piece to another one. And then a fight scene. And then a chase. And then there's a train. And you're like, oh, my God. So at the end of almost three hours, you're like, that was incredible. I mean, the chase scene I'm thinking of is about midway through the movie. And the chase scene itself was probably 25 minutes long. A long time. And the actors, it's Tom Cruise and it's Haley Atwell in, these, in, in a car. They're handcuffed to each other. And they have to drive through the narrow streets of Venice. And they're very clearly doing these stunts because they're not CGIing them, you know. It's like there's just Christopher McQuarrie, who's the guy that directed it, clearly just covered the vehicles in GoPros or something. And I, I mean, I don't know if they shot it for IMAX. They probably did. Um, and just filmed it. And it was so it's wild to watch. It's awesome. Um, Obviously, there's some the CGI. Weekend. I mean, there's, you know, yeah. they do the fighting on top of the train, which is kind of a callback to that very first Mission the first Impossible one. I love yeah. that. Um, one, I'm one of the, that train again. One of the characters from the first movie is back, and, you know. So it's everything you would want in a Mission Impossible movie. Emilio Estevez? No. Uh, nope. He got killed pretty early on in that first one. He got killed real he? fast, yeah. yeah. He's like, please put me in a movie. Right at the beginning. Yep. 
No, he was not in it. But um, is Ving Rhames in all of them? Yeah. Well, I think from like three on. No, because he was in the first one. Was he Ving Rhames? Yeah. Oh, then he's in all of them. Yeah, I think so. I don't remember him in the first one. But yeah, because like he was on the train running the. Was and he? he was he was in the uh, fire truck. He, he, yeah, okay, he's he's big part of the first one. I remember John Voight was in the first one. Yeah, he was the bad guy. Yeah. Red light, green light. So anyway, it opens today. Oh, yeah, opens gun. everywhere today. But and again, it, it you know these movies like they're getting themselves out of impossible situations. Wow, hence, that's the hence the. But it is funny because every time somebody it's become a joke now in the movie, they go, "It's not really called the Impossible Mission Force, is it?" And they're like, "Yeah," mm-hmm. but like Carrie Elwes is in it. He starts showing up in movies all of a sudden again. Nice. I always like him. Yeah, he's great. So, Shea Wiggum, who's a great actor, too. Simon um, Pegg in it? Simon Pegg is in it. Nice. Yep. Vanessa Kirby is back. Rebecca Ferguson, who's Foxy. I don't know if anybody's watching Silo on Apple TV. But I she's heard it's in, great. Yeah, it's real good. She's good in that. Things. So, yeah, I mean, as many thumbs as I have, I'll point them up for the for the first half of the last Mission Impossible. Maybe I'll check it out Sunday afternoon, do a matinee. I think when the second one comes out next summer, somebody should show them back to back. So you're sitting there for a full six hours watching Mission Impossible movies. No, I want show all. What are there going to be eight at that point? This is seven, seven I believe. Yeah. yeah, it'll be seven is split into I two watch parts. All eight, <laughs> one sitting, no bathroom. Do breaks. all the, <laughs> the impossible. <laughs> That'll be the Mission the, Impossible. Mission Impossible viewing. Yeah. Now, it's the miss it, Mission Impossible marathon. Mm-hmm. Watch all of the Fast and Furious movies and then all of the Mission Impossible movies Ooh. and see how it goes. Alan, did you see the thing about Alex Jones? God, I'll tell you what. For anybody who... Was he microwaving cats too? <laughs> no. For anybody who doubts what deplatforming will do to you, I did not even think Alex Jones was like... I mean, I guess he's got to do something. He's still doing Infowars or whatever he's doing. Because he's <laughs> got to make some money. Just Google this. What? No. I just Googled what uh, what he's trending for. Yeah, he said that God should blow the planet up. Yeah. Alex Jones. Alan, devotion to accuracy, there are no streets in Venice. Yes, there are. No streets. I Venice. thought the whole point of Venice was that it was... It's all canals. Yeah. It's not all canals, though. Mm. There are tons of canals. And no streets. Well, but until they, they, they dry out. Well, they were in Venice and they were doing a huge car chase. So, I mean, was it Venice Beach? There's one main <laughs> road and two proper side streets. That's it. Well, okay. Um, they were in Venice and doing a huge car chase where they were turning left and turning right into, you know, I mean, so. Well, that's unrealistic. They weren't on a gondola. It wasn't a gondola chase. That would have been better. You know who else is in it is that Palm, Palm Clom TF? Yeah. Who, She's like um, She's Mantis in the Mantis Guardians in movies, Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Pam Clementief. She's a French actress, and um, she's like an assassin in this movie, and she's dynamite because she's like a little slip of a lass, right? She's thin and small, but kicks a lot of ass in the movie. Um. Okay. Well, yeah. What I mean, streets, whatever. I just know they were doing a car chase in Venice. So maybe it was before Venice. I don't know. They were in Italy. Alex Jones says that God should blow the world up. Yeah. Is that what it is? To, to take that globalist. Oh, the globalists. <laughs> He's mad at the globalists saying they're going to do the that globalists. anyway. globalists. Is that what it is? Yeah, he said. And who are the globalists again? Uh, I have people that like Earth, I think. <laughs> okay. I, I can't quite wrap my head around uh, people that like want everybody to get along is a bad thing. Well, person who advocates the interpretation or planning of economic and foreign policy in relation to events and developments throughout the world. Clear as mud. Oh, that was Clear lot. as mud. So <laughs> I know. I'm really like, uh, so they're saying these are these are people who care about the developments of the world. But to him, they're the elites who are pulling the. The puppet strings of everyone yeah. else. But also, wouldn't the term globalist be a fundamental repudiation of flat earthers? I would think that would be a sizable portion of his fan base would be flat earthers. And they, at least semantically, you can't believe in globalists if you don't believe in the globe. No. 
You don't think so? No, I'm not. What? Isn't that true? <laughs> Can you be a globalist who thinks the earth is flat? Can you be a discus? <laughs> Here's Alex Jones. We, we might as well just blow up the planet then, because if they're in control, it's pure Satanism, pure pedophilia, pure animal-human clones, them playing God, a psychotic, mad scientist situation. So let's just cauterize it, vaporize it. If, if, if Look, I'm in the same boat as they are. They're ready to blow it up uh, if they're going to lose. I'm ready to blow it up if we lose too. Ready to blow it. They, I see, pedophiles and aliens and globalists. and yeah. Who do they keep catching for pedophilia, by the way? What's that? Who keeps getting busted for... Republicans. Oh, okay. Republican so, groomers, yes. yes. Usually. Hey, listen. Usually that's people why people want to tax... Ch churches yeah. are like tax-exempt pedophile farms. That's why people want to start taxing them again. I was reading how they finally made child marriage illegal in the state of Michigan. <laughs> and there were a number of Republicans who voted against that. No, no, no. We want to be able to marry 15-year-olds if we see fit. We're not down with it being 18 years old. Just 18. That's still pretty young, right? You're a legal adult. They might lose but you're their 18, birth and hips by then. <laughs> you're still 18 years old. So they finally banned child marriage. There are a lot of other states where every time that comes up, they go, nope. Because, hey, the heart wants what the heart wants or whatever. But I guess to Alex Jones, let's blow the world up. There was a guy who was asking if, you know, am I the a-hole? Because he and his girlfriend, he wanted to break up with her because he said, Are, we just have two different worldviews. And people couldn't figure out, like, where this guy was really coming from because he's 38, his partner's 41, and he's like, we just, we're, we, we, we're going through a rough patch. We're just two different views of the world. And then he finds out that she's pregnant. And he's like, we, we're, we haven't been dating for too long, but my girlfriend's pregnant. Now, again, these people are not 22 years old. He's 38. She's 41. And he's like, we're going to keep it because she's 41. Might never get another chance. And he's like, but we were having all these issues, and we have very different worldviews. We have very different opinions on things like finances and religion, decor. <laughs> aren't, aren't these things you find out pretty fast? You don't find out after two years what your girlfriend's opinion is on religion or hygiene. Well, hygiene, no, but religion, maybe you just don't talk about it. Well, but, I yeah. mean, that's... But you'd still have an opinion on it. I but mean, I'm saying maybe you don't. But I feel like if it's it. somebody, if it's important to someone one way or the other, you're going to bring it up pretty fast. So I can't imagine whatever they feel about religion is a deal breaker because they haven't talked about it. Whether you're really religious or not really religious, yeah, that's going to come up in the first month. Brian and I didn't talk about religion for a while. But again, you guys aren't that into religion. Right. I mean, we didn't really talk about it until <laughs> Blake came out to dinner with my whole family and we prayed before the meal. And Blake kind of looked at Brian and I looked at him and I was like, has she ever prayed before? And he's like, I don't think so. <laughs> and so, like, that was kind of our first. Right. Well, uh, what I wonder in this situation, though, is because this guy acts like he's 22. He's like, oh, she wanted one name and I wanted another and I didn't like that. Um, I wonder if these started to be conversations because they were going to have a kid. Yeah. Oh, probably. Like, yeah. are we going to ra raise him? How about But it was just funny the way he put it. We just have very different views on decor. This actually started, I wouldn't say a fight, but it was a discussion between me and my boyfriend because we said if we ever got married, I said, I'm not changing my last name. I got it tatted on my arm. I got the initials tatted on my arm. That's not his fault. Uh, I know, but there's He no shouldn't suffer for your bad decisions. Uh, but why do I have to change my last name? You guys just name, make though? a new uh, last name together? He wants to he combined last names. He's he wanted to do a hyphen, and I'm like, man, I don't want to be a gay one of those gays that have a hyphen, because then if we have kids, our kids are gonna be hyphenated. Like, and if they have kids and they have hyphens, no, the hyphen <laughs> gays. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to be hyphen. You know, there are plenty gays. of straight couples with hyphenated. I mean, usually the woman, but I mean, it's just so long, and 
people are just only gonna call you by. Does one he name have anyways. a long last name? Yes. Oh, and like, it's it's gonna be long. People are only gonna call you by one name anyway. Right, but at least you would demand that your name was first in the hyphen. No oh, alphabetical. At, no, his sounds better. It sounds better coming with his, first with his name first. Uh, Encyclopedia in Brown. Because <laughs> ah, be awesome. uh, if I if I put it the other way, it sounds gross. Because my name is way shorter. Mm. Um, so we discussed that. I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna brown stay. splatter bucking." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. but yeah, that, these are types of discussions we have, and I'm like, "Well, why can't we just stay independent? You keep your last name, and I keep my last name, and we'll still be a unit." There was like, "Well, people won't know that we're married, and we should want to show that." I'm like, "Well, take my last name then." So with, we, neither one of us wanted to completely get rid of our last names. With everything in me, I'm trying to convince Brian to take my last name. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so I'm trying to say, like, I've built a career with my name, and I can't really change it, but he could totally become Brian's. That he would go like, viral. You guys would be the couple. Absolutely not. Well, you He's wouldn't like, be the first never... people to do that. I mean, I there's, know, there's but... a bunch of hipsters who've done that, but yeah. I mean... But you would still use your name even if you were married. That was his whole point. Right. He's like, well, your legal name would be my last name because we're married. Oh, he cares if you would take yes. his name. He's- See, I told Gwen, and she didn't change her name for like three or four years after we got married. I go, you definitely. She has like a 13 consonant Polish maiden name. I said, if you don't want to go down to three letters, that's up to you. I said, you absolutely do not have to change your name. She's like, I want to. It's just a pain in the ass. I said, whatever you want to do is fine. You guys didn't discuss But these guys who been- like want somebody like to. Demand it. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. He doesn't like demand it, but he's like. But he expects you to take his name. He's like, he was surprised when I said I wouldn't. He was like, really? Like, I, I don't know. I thought we'd be married. But it's you your know, professional name. Married. Well, that's why he was like, well, you could have my legal last name. And then you could still go by Mary Santora for stages and like. Comedy. What's his last so, name? Bailey. Mary Bailey. It's like her dream come true. I know, right? Mary, Mary, don't you know? Mary, throw a lasso around it. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's your favorite name from your favorite (laughs) movie. The only way to solve this problem is with money. And you're fighting him on this? I just think it would be funnier. And I told him, fine. But if I get famous enough that he can quit his job and be a stay at home wife, then he has to take my last name. He has to be right. But how would that help him? It doesn't. Oh. He just wanted to change his name. It's just feminism. Yeah. Listen, you can't expect me to change mine if you're not going to change yours. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't need anybody to change it. No, keep your, it's your name. You've had your name way longer than you've known me. I'm like, it's your dad's name. I want to do the paperwork. I'm not going to expect somebody else to do the paperwork. Right. My ex-wife well, changed that's what her I name. I said. I was like, dude, it's licenses. I didn't ask her. And, ugh, yeah. and every other thing you got to do. Yeah, and that's why I don't want to have a hyphen because it's just so long. It might go down to the, like, the net. No, I might you're just be, lazy. You just don't want to write. <laughs> I need two lines, and I might misspell it because it's very, what, what is You it? guys want to combine the names? Take the letters from your name, letters from his name, make a new last name? No. Create your own brand? No. Brown has to be in there in some way, shape, or form. Otherwise, I look like an idiot <laughs> with somebody else's name. Like no, you can just start with B. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, ooh, it feels you so you want to get that covered up anyway. Yeah, but I'm probably not going to because I'm afraid <laughs> that uh, my skin will fall off because of my psoriasis. Fall off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shut up, pound cake. Well, at least he's got a rational reason. <laughs> <laughs> His skin will fall off. For, I don't want to be a hyphen gay He will molt. He thinks he's going to get leprosy. Yeah. Uh, hey, you want to go see the Cleveland Orchestra at Blossom? They're going to show Lord of the Rings, the two towers on the big screen, and the CLE Orchestra will score the film right there in front of you. What a time. Uh, part of their big concert series out there 